Hey everyone and welcome back. Steve here with Kevin. Uh, this week we're working on our side control top control and uh, transitions to the mount on the back. Um, let's get going. Why don't I have you uh, on the top line? So when I'm passing someone's guard, right, and I, and I immediately get past the legs, it's very natural to want to like pounce and come towards that person's head. But the truth is there often will be a lot of space between uh, the person's neck and where you are when you initially pass. And so instead of going for the head, I generally will try to control the hips at first. And because usually he's gonna be trying to turn to face me and I wanna turn his hips away. So while I'll bring my elbows and chest down on his hips, it's really gonna be my legs that start to walk with my weight down on him. If he turns in hard, my legs will actually, I lift my, just my knees off the ground and will walk my legs into his hips trying to turn him back. Right, I like my far side elbow on his hip and then the truth is, when working up, I would rather get a near side underhook, meaning my left arm going under his right arm. If I can get my arm underneath, this not only uh, makes it harder for him to rotate in, let's go back a little bit, rotate in to face me, it takes the arm completely out of the, the fight to where if I do want to slide to the mount, it's, uh, he can't enter deep half guard because uh, that arm is stuck. So again, when I'm low, or even if I started high and then he starts to shrimp out and I feel like I'm losing control, I will get off my knees and start to walk my legs in towards his legs just to get him back kind of flat on the ground. Obviously I'm up so I can, you guys can see, but I'd be low with pressure, right? Heavy pressure down. I start to walk my legs in and then my goal becomes to get underneath the near side arm. If I can get underneath, I'll actually grab with like my thumb in, in the back of his collar my far side arm will slide up close to his body. As I'm walking up, I try to get uh, my head over to the ground, really. So I'm up, my, my chest on his chest, my forehead down low on the ground. And then from here, I will uh, slide to the mount, bring my knee across his hip line, sliding the foot. Once both feet are over, both feet hooking underneath his hips down, uh, my forehead down, a lot of pressure, double underhooks. It's not a good, it's not a fun place to be. If, when I'm trying, if when I'm trying to get this underhook just to check my arm, I will at first work kind of a, a high low, fake high to try to slip underneath the arm. But when it comes down to it, uh, one, once he once he's in, and then I work you know my initial connection at first, and I'll work my way up, right? So the, the initial idea again is when he connects, I want to try to go underneath and get my grip. But if I absolutely can't, right, he's just gonna hold it. I wanna get this end type of control on that collar for now, and then I'll work uh, for the far side underhook, thinking again, up high, my forehead like towards the ground, my chest on his chest. Often, uh, if this arm ends up on your hip line, here, right, even when I, I do get control over the head or the neck, a person who puts that arm on, the, on your hips, it becomes a, a real problem in their ability to stop you from moving or transitioning. And so I've become a real big fan of uh, addressing this arm before you do anything else, right? Meaning if I didn't get a tight grip, if he kept me from being super tight and I started like a looser collar grip, I would allow myself to create just enough space to get my shin over the bicep, to, to pin the arm. Meaning I can elevate up just enough, just enough with good grips, just enough to go over the arm, to pin it. And again, I'm only up so people can I staying up so people can see. Coming down, I do with this far side underhook, pinning, getting my head to the ground again. And the time, do I want to slide over the mount? That's great. But if I can't pin over the arm, then I'm just gonna try to shelve it um, on the outside of my hips, not on the inside. So to get it on the, the outside, I can literally do a sit out, like I'll switch, like as if we're turning into a scarf fold to get his elbow up. And then I will drive my hips up as I turn my knee back, trying to get my left hip on the inside of this elbow here. Uh, up. And when it's here, I'll touch my elbow to my knee. And again, uh, there's sh shoulder pressure on the one side of his jaw and my head's on the other side. So I'm kind of stapling to the ground here, head tight. Once his arm's out of the way like this, that's when I feel comfortable sliding to the mount. Meaning I'm here, I'll lift up the slide, boom, down, and I'll get uh, my two hooks. So again, if I'm far away, what may I do like a pressure pass, like a double over style, oh, and I'm passing his legs. From here, I'm controlling his hips, and my near side arm is trying to get underneath, and I walk my way up, 
for uh, collar grips. I really can do double collar grips, like grabbing on both sides in the back of the collar and trying to get my forehead up towards the ground. If during this process, he checks my arm, I'm trying to first go up and around underneath. If I can't go underneath, I'll get my, just my base connection to work my way up and work for my control. If his hand switches to my hips, I don't let it stay there. I either hit it by going over top, or I will uh, uh, sit out and then bring my left hip on the inside to, 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 to trap his elbow outside my hips. And again, my forward to the ground, sliding to mount. Obviously, if you have a partner that's much bigger, your head might not touch the ground, but the idea of attempting to helps me keep my weight low and keep his head immobilized. So for this week's positional sparring, we're gonna work from side control. And the person on the bottom is gonna work their escapes. The person on top is working control. They're working um, submissions. They know submissions. We didn't cover submissions in this video. We'll do that next time. Or transitions to the mount or the back. Again, um, uh, 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 we, uh, we're focusing on just the one transition for right now to the mount. But if you know other techniques, you're obviously uh, free to work anything as long as it's safe. Uh, we're gonna do four or five minute rounds like we usually do. And like always, um, obviously this is not an exhaustive list of all the different transitions that you can use. You will see Kevin and I use different transitions um, while we're kind of flowing through the additional sparring. That's why we do it, right? We do it so that it's not just here's a single technique, it's okay, here's a single technique, and then watch us play with it. So you see variations, you see contingencies when you know something doesn't go perfect, or how did I adapt or how do we switch it up? So we're gonna do four or five minute rounds. I'll see you guys in one minute.